Hello everyone, this is Vikram from Data Edge Learning and here I'm going to show you about the very basic pipeline on data pipeline on Google Cloud. Okay, so if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it so I can be able to provide you more and more information, informative uh, video related to the Google Cloud data engineering field. So at your, uh, you can be able to see at your screen this is the very basic pipeline and this whole pipeline is going to start with cordless purpose no need to have idea or learning on any of the programming language for this purpose okay so this is totally cordless data engineering data pipeline you can see the data is present and started with the cloud sql and from there it will be moved to the cloud storage and it will make use of the one of the feature data stream so the data can be transferred from cloud sql to the cloud storage okay and once the data is available into the cloud storage from there it will move into the bigquery and it will be moved by making use of the data flow which is another one of the major services of the google cloud okay so no need to worry Actually, if you don't have any idea on all of these services, I'll start myself on the very basic uh, informative sessions on all of these services while creating the data pipeline itself. To create the data pipeline, first you need to have a Google Cloud account login. If you don't, you can create it. And if you need any kind of the information about how we can create the Google Cloud account, just follow my another videos where I have shown you the way. Okay, so let's start it with the Google Cloud SQL. What you can do, you can just log in into your Google Cloud console and you have to just come to this page. Okay, so what you need to do? First of all, you need the Cloud SQL. So you can come to this menu bar and you can be able to get it, the SQL over here. If you are not able to get it, what you can do, you can be able to search it from here. Okay, so you can type over here the SQL and uh, it will list you the SQL so you can be able to use it. Now, you can see we are at the Cloud SQL page and here I don't have the, any running instances of the Cloud SQL. So what actually is the Cloud SQL provided by the GCP? You can see the GCP Cloud SQL is a fully managed relational MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server database. So by default, it is providing you the managed services of these three database. Another services you can also try and you can be able to install it. Okay, but for our purpose, it is not required. So we'll ignore that one. What we are going to do? We are going to just create the managed services of the Cloud SQL. So how we can create either we can create with this create instance or we can click on this button now you will be redirected to this cloud sql page where it will ask you which database you want to select whether you want to select mysql postgres or vs or sql server we are going to start with the mysql so i'll choose this mysql as a option from here and in this one also, oh, is it the first time? So it will ask you in order to create an instance, you have to enable the compute in the API first. So how to enable? It is a play, uh, button available over here. You will simply click on this one. It will enable the services for you. Whatever the services, managed services of the GCP you are going to use for the first time, it will ask you to enable the API. So we'll wait till the time it is getting enabled. So you can see now here, we had got our uh, API enable and it is asking us uh, like uh, some of the details for creating the MySQL instance into GCP console, okay? So we'll start like info ID. Okay, so we can give the name like the database one. Okay, you can give any name based on your 
idea what you want to give. I'm giving simply the database one. Then it will ask the password. This password you can give your own password or you can generate it from here. So I'll be basically giving my password from here itself. You can make this as a no password as well, but I will make use of the simple normal password for this one. If you are setting the passwords, you should require this password policy to be get followed. Okay. I will simply ignore this one because I have given my own password. Now it will ask you which database version of the MySQL you want to start with. So I'll start with 5.7. You can choose any one. Okay. Like 5.7, 5.6, 8.0. I'll start with the 5.7. Now the basic thing, choose a configuration to start and make uh, now onwards, whatever the uh, configurations you will be choosing from here, all these summary will be presented over here and it will get reflected as per your choice. Okay. So whether you want to go for the production level or whether you want to go for the development level. So what actually is the difference in between them? Okay. You want to see the difference then you can click on that and you can be able to see the production and development differences the cpu differences memory differences total area of the differences and other things So we will uh, try to use the minimal services, will not go up to the production level. So we will try to choose the development from these options. Now you can see here the CPU memory and other things details will get changed according to the development. Okay. Now what we need to uh, do next step, that is the region and zonal availability, which region you want to create your bucket, uh, not bucket, it is a MySQL database. So always try to choose the region which is nearest to you. Okay. So I'm in the Asia region and I'll be choosing the Asia South 2. Then here it is asking you the zonal availability, which zone you want to create, single zone or multi zone. So what actually the differences in between them, you can be able to get it from here, the basic differences. And it is saying South which zone you want to see, uh, select in the south two. Okay, I'll be selecting this one. Anyone I can be able to get it. Now, it is asking me the customize your instance. Okay, so I'll click on this one to see what customization I can be able to do it. Okay, so very first thing, it is asking the machine type. Okay, if you explore this one, you can be able to see the high memory, shared code, lightweight, standard so it is for the learning purpose try to get it for the shared code okay so here now you can see in share code it will give you one vcpu and 1.7 gigs of the memory that is sufficient for our work okay a storage which type of the storage and how much you want so ssd will be by default a storage and i will not make use of the 100 gb i will try to make use for the 20 gb itself Enable automatic storage increase, leave as it is. If in future, if we want, we can be able to increase it. Okay. Then it is asking the connections, whether you want the private IP, public IP. So we will make use of the public IP itself. And here you can be able to see there is the options that is known as the ad network. And why we want to make use of this ad network? And what is the purpose of using this one? So I have the another video available into the same playlist over uh, you can be able to see. If you are not adding any network over here, it will be limited to the GCP console itself. From the local window, you cannot be able to connect it. Okay. To connect it from anywhere, you need to whitelist this feature. Okay. And to whitelist this one, you need to add the network over here. Okay. So click on this add network. Even though after creating this MySQL instance, you can 
add the network later on as well, but I am adding now itself. Okay, I am giving uh, the name. You can give anything, any name over here, there is no issue. And in this network field, you have to give this IP. It will simply whitelist the things. Okay, now you can see I have given this IP and it is saying you have added this, this as the allowed network means it will be able to allow and pass it from the network firewall policy and any client from accessible link, it can be able to access. Then you can click on this done. So one network is uh, added over here. Then data protection. I will not change anything over here. I will leave as it is maintenance also. We will leave as it is flag. If you want to add it, anything you can add it. Else you can ignore all these things. Labels. If you want to add any kind of the labels, you can add this one. If you don't want, you can ignore this one. So I will add this label like this one. We uniquely identify. Then I will click on this done. And now with this configuration selected, now you can see the configurations of what the MySQL instances which we have selected. And then we can click on this create instance. And you can see the pop up over here instances being created. Okay. And you can see the same messages over here as well. To create the instance into the console, it will require around five minutes of your time. Uh, these Google people will check your availability into the region and zone to provision your database. Okay. MySQL database into the cloud console. You can see it is uh, still in progress. So I'll stop this video for a while. Okay. Once it is getting created, then I will resume it. So stay tuned. So welcome back. And now we can see that our MySQL database 5.7 is successfully created. You can see this uh, status as a green box over here. And this is the, your MySQL database. Now, what do we want to do next? How we can use this MySQL, okay? To make use of this MySQL, we need to connect it uh, from the local machine to see whether we are able to connect it or not, okay? For, the, uh, for this purpose, we need to just simply make use of any of the editor. So I'll see simply make use of this VS, VS client. Okay. In this client, we need to have certain kind of the plugins. And once the plugin is ready, you can be able to connect it from the VS code or to this MySQL instance. Okay. So in my case, I have already the plugin is installed which plugin you need to install and where you need to install. If you don't have the idea, just follow my another video. Okay. Once you install any of the plugins for connecting the databases, you will be seeing the options like this one. Then you can click on this database. And you can see earlier I have used this. So let me edit the same connection itself. Okay, so here you will be, if you are seeing the first time, you will be seeing this page as a blank and uh, you have to get this page from clicking on this plus sign. But I have already used this one. So uh, I have this page it's available. I will be simply modifying this connection itself. Okay, so first of all, we need to have this mandatory fit at the host. So the host information, we can be able to get it from here. So I simply copy this one. Okay, make sure that you are connecting to the same host 151, right? 
here 150 user name will be by default root port will be this one and here it will ask you the password so you need to give the same password whatever you have given at the time of creating the mysql instance once you give all this information what you have to do you have to click on this connect if the connection is successful or failure it will give you the logs over here so I see here it is saying the connection timed out means our connection is not successfully created okay so how to fix this issue uh, we'll come to next video okay thank you